Hello, and welcome to 10 Minutes That Can Change Your Life. This program is brought to you each week by the Port Huron Church of Christ, located at 75617 Street, right here in the city of Port Huron. If you have been following us, we want you to know that we really appreciate your support. And if this is your first time visiting with us, we want to thank you for tuning in. If you enjoy this program, would you please do us a small favor and spread the word by sharing it with your friends on Facebook? We would really appreciate that. So, what do you want to talk about today? You know, I was thinking about that. And I thought about this virus, this COVID-19, and instantly I knew what we were going to talk about. Today, the subject is patience. Someone said, Lord, give me patience and do it now. However, it was Bill McGlashan who said, patience is something you admire in the driver behind you, but not in the one ahead. Ain't that the truth? You know, patience is one of our core attributes that is essential to our character. An old Dutch proverb put it this way, an ounce of patience is worth a pound of brains. What defines patience in the purest sense is not the fact that we can wait or whatever, for whatever. Patience is defined in us how we wait who we are or be who we become when we are forced into a situation that demands us to wait longer than we desire. So let's begin with a question. How are you when it comes to patience? Would you consider yourself a patient person? Or are you like the person who says, I can never be a doctor because I don't have any patience? I know, I know. You just hit me with the corny card, but you get the message. We can actually divide ourselves right down the middle by this singular attribute. All the patient people, you stand to the line, in the line to my right, and for all you impatient, you stand in the city to my left. Yes, I'm convinced that the lion's share of us are impatient and would flunk a test in patience in a New York minute. What? You don't agree? Okay. Then let's see how you do. I have four questions. First question. You are in the checkout line. Now I'm finding the big guns here, so look out. Are you constantly watching the lines around you to see if they are moving faster than the one you're in? If so, would you please take a seat? You flunked. Number two, let's continue. If you notice your cashier is quite a bit slower, do you begin counting the people in line calculating if it is advantageous for you to jump to a faster line? If you do that, you too may take a seat because you failed the test. So let's see who's standing. Okay, I got a good one for you here. You are in the line at the drive up ATM. Come on, you can feel this one coming, right? We've all done this. And you quickly go to the shortest line. Suddenly, it dawns on you, the lines on both sides of you have not only moved faster than yours, but the people who were once behind you are now gone and you have only moved up one car. And now you're a bit perturbed. Where did you go? Oh, I see you went and had a seat. I knew I would get you. Last question. There's two people standing. Let's see how they do. You pull into the fast food restaurant, and as you pull into the parking lot, you're trying to decide whether it is faster to go in and get your food or to use the drive through So you look around and you take a chance and you decide to go in. But before you do, you take note of the car that is in front of you that you would have been behind had you gone through the drive through Now, as you stand in line waiting your turn, 
your eyes are glued to the drive-in window, looking for that car that you would have been behind. And suddenly it appears, and there are still two people ahead of you in line. Now the car behind them is gone, and they are just now taking your order. And you feel a bit bummed because you guessed wrong. If that reminds you of you, would you too please take a seat? Oh, look. There's no one left standing. I think I proved my point. You see, most of us struggle to some degree with patience, whether it is a in a relationship with a mate, a child, a siblings. Sometimes patience seems to be a very tall order, especially now, considering COVID-19 has become the official patience test. That's right. What do you mean I have to stand outside in line in the rain? Oh, and I have to be six feet behind the person in front of me? Look, people, I'm just trying to buy toilet paper. Give me a break. You know, sorry. <laughs> I kind of... In talking to people, I'm beginning to see us like horses in the starting gate. We're all just sitting at home waiting for the doors to fly open as the official word hits. You can come out now. You know, it also reminds me when I was young, and you probably went through this when you were in school, back in your early days, at the end of a long day, everyone would line up by the door waiting for the last few minutes to tick off the clock before the bell rings setting us free for the day. Boy, we hit that door like we were running for our lives and not as if we were just coming back tomorrow. You know, I don't know how you did on the patient's test. I have to be honest. I know I failed miserably. You know, I realize that I fall into the category of Margaret Thatcher, the former Prime Minister of Great Britain. She said, I am extraordinarily patient, provided I get my own way in the end. Is that you too? But you know, as I grow older, I notice the silver hair generation are not as impatient as the younger people. So I have surmised, I think that they have finally grasped the idea that being impatient is not worth the energy. They have fought and struggled all their life against patience and now they have just given up and accepted defeat. And that's wisdom. So, what makes patience so important? Well, patience helps us to hold our tongue, which prevents us from sticking our foot in our mouths on a regular basis. You know, we all know that person. It seems like every time you see them, there's a shoe hanging from their mouth. So, now that I have your attention, let's look at 10 benefits of being patient. Number one, being patient gives you time to think. Patience keeps you from flying off at the handle and it gives you time to process and think so that you won't end up with a severe case of foot in mouth disease. Number two, patience builds perseverance. It aids you in making and keeping long-term goals. Rome wasn't built in a day, my mother would often say, suggesting that things just take time. Patience allows you to complete what you have started without giving up. Number three, patience is a sign of maturity. You know, babies expect instant um, gratification and attention. That is why they cry. You know, as we mature, we move away from baby mentality, hopefully, most of us do at least, as we realize that patience helps us to grow into maturity. Number four, patience is better for your health. People who practice patients on a regular basis have an average lower blood pressure and has left, have less stress in their lives and are much healthier overall than a person who stays wound up 
because they don't have any patience. Number five, patient people make better friends and neighbors. It is commonly believed that patient people tend to be more cooperative, more fair, and more forgiving. They're better friends and neighbors. Number six, patients give situations time to work themselves out. Sometimes what a situation really needs is time for things to just kind of fall into place. When we are patient, which is in control of our emotions, wants, and desires, we make better decisions in acquiring the things we want and need because patience prevents us from making impulsive decisions and purchases. Number seven, patience becomes a guide in assisting you in learning something new. It provides a stick to itness to stay with a new thing and until through patience and persistence you have mastered it. This covers all areas of your life. A person with no patience will always shy away from new things because they lack the mental discipline necessary to understand and master it. Patience is a way to practice kindness. Patience will always reward you in your relationship with others. It enables you to listen intently to what they are saying without jumping ahead in your mind, preparing what you are going to say next. Patience makes it easy to talk to and to be a good listener. Number nine, patience brings you peace. Patience will calm your mind and give you peace when you deal with people and situations. A firm grip on patience will prove to be a lifelong friend who will bless your life in many ways. And lastly, number 10, patience is the road to maturity. As we mature, our mastery of patience will prove to be the road on which your life will travel until the day you die. Patience will guide us, restrain us, motivate us, control us, calm us, inspire us, discipline us, and yes, even reward us. You know, at the end of your life, patience will be a well-worn out tool in your life's toolbox. You know, when you sum it all up, Patience is an exercise in self-control. It is a discipline that always works in the best interest and to the best good of the individual. So the next time you think about patience, see it for what it really is. It is the pause that helps us get our thoughts back in order and our feelings under control before we say or do something that we are going to live to regret. This is Lamar Black. Minister of the Port Huron Church of Christ, where we love God, love people with no limits, saying thank you for tuning in today. And if you have the patience, we will meet you here, right here next week, with another thought that will help you change your life 10 minutes at a time. See you next week. Until then, stay in and stay safe.